massive deals. So I want you to think, Josh, of the the biggest wholesale deal that I want to do a breakdown on. So start start getting the, the biggest wholesale deal. Yeah, the, the biggest deal. The, the Ooh, biggest oh, whole, wholesale deal. Do you remember what list it was from? I do not remember. No. Okay. Do you yeah. remember what his motivation was? Uh, so the motivation was a divorce. So maybe that was what it was from. Okay. Yeah. So this couple was going through a divorce. Yeah. And um, so again, we we realized that we had to get in front of these these people. They were a little little bit older, not as technology friendly. Yep. So we went out there. Uh, we actually had several meetings in person. Um, there was a whole bunch of things. We had to get very creative with helping them, you know, logistically moving furniture from point A to point B, helping them find a place, even getting creative on the back end because they needed funds before they could buy another place. Um, so like literally every trick in, in the industry, we had to come up with and provide that as a solution for this deal in particular. Yeah. Um, but this is actually a deal that we looked at in 20, the beginning of 2020. We, we looked back and we're, this was a big wholesale for us. And we did like an audit on that deal in particular. And we're like, man, imagine if we were to rehab this. It was a very easy rehab, the only cosmetic rehab. And, you know, the person that we sold it to, you know, we're real big into, I look, I don't, if, if I make money, you make money, great. I don't want to count your Leave pockets. Leave meat on the bone. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like that, that it's, it's a win for everyone. That's great. But this was a huge eye opener for us that, man, you know, we need to start doing these light cosmetic renovations because we could, that could have been a six figure deal for us. Right. Are you talking about Jordan Hall deal? Yeah, so we made we made uh, uh, forty seven thousand on the assignment, uh, but the rehabber made seventy five plus based on what we saw that he mm -hmm. had done and everything like that. And he renovated it in like two weeks. Right. So I mean, this was so this a could big have mistake been, on our end that we didn't rehab. This could have been a hundred plus thousand. <laughs> listen, easy, so. listen, everybody out there is listening, saying, "Oh, woe is you guys! You, made, you only <laughs> made forty seven. First of all, let's ring this victory bell. Come on. Oh yeah. I love it. 47,000 from one phone call. Do we approach pre foreclosures any differently than we do a regular seller, right? And the answer is, well, yes to no, right? Uh, yes, in the fact that these people are more sensitive, right? That that they're going to be trying to hide it, hiding more, they're feeling more vulnerable. There's ego involved, right? If you've got a, a man in his house and you approach him about foreclosure, he doesn't want you know, some, some guy coming to his house and saying, I know you're in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We have egos, right? Yeah. I mean, men and women too, men are worse, you know, but, um, they don't want to release that. So we use a technique across all, uh, all, all areas of sales called a stealth mismatch, but in pre foreclosures, it's much more important. So the idea is like, if you go to a car dealership and you're on there on the lot and a salesman walks up to you, and they ask you if you're uh, interested in buying a car, you say, I'm just looking. And that is because you're scared. You don't want to give information. You're going to clam up. And that's what 90% of sellers do, yeah. right? They do not tell you the truth. So what we do with a stealth mismatch is that it, it, it's, it works just like it sounds. It's stealth. The seller doesn't really see what you're doing, but you mismatch the seller. So you say the complete opposite of what the seller is expecting. So you may say, Mr. Seller, it sounds like you've, you, you've got all the time in the world you know, on your house, you probably don't need to sell. You've got this handled, but would it be even worth a conversation about talking about your your house? Awesome. Right? Yeah. And, you know, even like start walking away. Hey, hey, you know, I know you're good. And hopefully you're going to listen at response. Well, wait, hold up, hold up. I don't have it completely handled. Right. And then just shut up. Right. And that's the key. After you do a stealth mismatch, shut up. Mm -hmm. Don't say a word. A lot of people say, Todd, I wish I could shadow you for a day, right? I wish I could hear you talk to a motivated seller. Yeah. I can tell you it's very boring, right? Because you're not going to learn much from me talking because they're doing all the talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's what's key. I mean, I think, you know, I, I get it. I, and I get the same kind of questions about uh, uh, cold calling. But once you open it up, the first 30 seconds, most of the time, it's just them talking. I mean, I do these cold call breakdowns, and it's mostly the owner talking and just kind of letting us know what's going on. So, I mean, it's uh, once you ask the right questions, the seller should be talking more than you are. The seller should be talking, too. But the pull away we talked about this being reluctant, you also do not want to be like face to face. You don't want to be like in their face, right? You want to back away. You want to be to the side, have your body language here. Very, very, very non-threatening. I know I'm going away from the mic here, but I'm sure. trying to visually talk about here. Yeah. 
right? And then just say, hey, look, you know, you, you want to use it in a couple of different ways. So the, the pull away is um, also you can use it as a question. So you could say, Mr. Seller, I'm not sure if this would be a fit or not. You're probably not interested in this. But what if I could make your payments and then give you $30,000 for your equity? Is that something that you'd even consider or, or probably not? I mean, you're probably all set, right? Make a strange face, step away. I know you got this handled, right? And then is this something you would consider or probably not? I love it. Or probably not. Probably not, right? Like you're, a, you're, you're making the assumption for them and they're like, wait, don't make assumptions for me. They almost want to be anti that. You know what I mean? They want to be like, well, you know, maybe, you know, there might be something there. I mean, I don't want to shut the door completely. And then it opens up. I love it. I love it. Guys, well, convert, that's what they call it, the stealth mismatch. Yeah, convert wholesale deals. All this is in Todd's training. Like I mentioned before earlier, every single one of my acquisition managers goes through the no limit sales system. Convert wholesale deals. Definitely check that out if you want to take it to the next level. All right, guys, we are back for another cold call breakdown. I'm excited about this because this is going to show you a real life example of what not to do, okay? And what I'm talking about here, the one main tip that I want you to pull from this video right now is to actively listen to the person you're talking to on the phone. Okay, I want a lot of shores. I want a lot of uh-huhs. I want to okay. Yeah, I get it. I understand all these things, okay? This caller is great. She's got a great tone. She's sticking to the script, but you're going to see in this video, it gets to the point where she's rapid firing questions. She's digging a little bit too much without letting the conversation breathe a little bit and the dude shuts her down with a classic shutdown. You're gonna see it right here. This is only a two minute, two and a half minute uh, recording. And this is an actual seller and an actual phone prospector calling and seeing if this owner would consider an offer on their property. Check this out. How soon would you be looking to sell? Oh, I don't know, maybe another month or two. Okay, and um, what is your lease expiring? Is it also in a month or two? I don't have a lease on it. Okay, no lease. All right, gotcha. Now, lastly, what what was it that you that you decided or that you were considering selling? Is there a reason why? This is just we haven't even dated, and you want to like this is oh my gosh! You're, you're you're trying to marry right away. You're trying to get everything. It's so greedy. It feels very greedy. It feels very like. Give me all the information so that I can make a decision. No, 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 no. Listen, you can pull that out way more tactfully, right? If you were to if you were to sell this property, where would your tenants move to? Right? How about that question? How about um, you know, if I give you the if we can come to an agreement, are your tenants okay with getting out of the property in the next 30 days? Do you think they'd be comfortable with that? This is all concerned. These are all things that you need to put into your tool belt because I'm telling you, it's going to be a better conversation. You're going to get a lot more info. She's going question, question, question. And do you notice one thing? There's no active listening. Uh-huh. Sure. Great. Yep. I understand. Uh-huh. That makes sense. She's question after question after question after question. And the first minute the dude was cool. He's got a good enthusiasm. He's responding. And then she hits him with, how'd you come up with that offer? And then why would you sell it? What is going on with your tenants? All of these things. And it's like, it's too much. You got to soften it up or people that are strangers that have a busy life are going to stiff arm you. You need to understand if you are sending out mass texts, it is over. They're going to make you register. And even if you can register, if people are complaining that you're spamming or whatever else, they're going to close your whole company out by their EIN. They're going to track you. That's the whole traced act, right? That's the whole point is to bring more uh, transparency to who is sending these messages and what is their intention with these messages. And so we're not, we don't know. We don't know if you're going to be able to text 500 and be cool and that's fine. But 
But what I would say now is best practice moving forward is start figuring out how you're going to generate leads outside of text blasting if you're like that 10% of the, not even. Not I mean, even it's 10%. like 1% of people are sending out mass, 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 mass text. At this point, the people that are doing it and doing it cleanly and doing it as, you know, a smaller company and just getting going in this, it seems to be that um, we're going to continue to be able to do that if it's specific until we hear your otherwise. Correct. It, it's seductive, even for my business. I mean, yep. I've got uh, I've got a solid million dollar plus business. We were looking yep. into sending out 20, 30, 50,000 texts a day. It was going to be, you know, wow, there's going to be so many leads. And we were kind of testing this out about 16, 18 months ago. And we were like, holy cow, first of all, you need to have a ton of data, yep. right? Which is fine. You can yep. get it, right? You, you need a ton of data. And second, we were getting so many fake tire kickers and looky loos and everything that the whole business was like totally, uh, we weren't doing anything because we were spending so much time going after these leads of people texting us back very, you know, nonchalantly or very passively that they might consider an offer. Now we're trying to call them all the time and it was just a mess. So we tailed, brought it all the way down, got very, that's why we, yeah. honestly, that's why we switched. Uh, two batch leads was because you guys stack the list, you stack the list and then all of a sudden, boom, you know who the, the people that have multiple layers of distress, yeah. their pre foreclosure, tax default, their vacant properties, all of a sudden they have all three of those. We're, we're going after those and we're getting them.